Spiritual Teaching 252 Love Each Other 1. People who have witnessed my manifestation at this time, you are the one prepared to interpret and remain as an example for the last. You know the reason for my coming, as you also know the reason for my departure, arrival of the hour appointed by my will. 2. You have nothing to fear from the world because you are my disciples. Not for being humble will you be destitute. Do not confuse the humility of spirit with poverty of the flesh. Not because you are spiritualists are you going to lose your human rights, on the contrary, he who understands and applies spirituality to his life, owns everything that surrounds him, and lives and enjoys with greater intensity than he who only sees and feels the material. 3. Spiritualized men are those who will worthily display the name of disciples of Christ in the Third Era. Men who know how to give to God what is of the Spirit, and to the world what is of the flesh. For men who do all, there is only one law, which is to love your Creator and love Him in His brother. 4. A man spiritually prepared by my doctrine will be able to perform superhuman works. 5. From your spirit and your body will emanate a light, a power and a force that will allow you to do what intelligence alone is not able to carry out. 6. I want you to reach that degree of elevation, beloved people, because then each work of yours will be a testimony of my truth. From your word, as from your prayer and even from your hands, the divine bomb will flow, which will be joy and liberation of the sick of the body or of the spirit. From your word will emerge the light that brings faith to the spirits and your prayer will be the means by which the spirit is transported, sowing good in its wake. 7. That is the fruit of those who follow me and know how to interpret and fulfill my teachings. 8. Watch from now on so that your mind will never be clouded, so that in the tests that you have to pass, not to betray what is your faith today. 9. What joy will there be in this people when they are rid of their imperfections and be practicing my word according to my will? 10. For now, you still have many obstacles that prevent you from moving towards spirituality. Those obstacles, you know, are your lack of union, your attachment to external worship and the lack of true charity. 11. The strong, idealistic and fighting people do not rise from among you. The people in which humanity can find the counselor, the doctor, the brother, the guide. The people do not yet appear among you who in their union and fraternity resembles an immense home, full of peace, respect and love, where one's bread is that of others and roof of one is that of all. 12. Where is that example? When have you fought for such an ideal? 13. What I say to you is not a reproach, people, it is the word of a father who wants only the good for his children and to achieve this you would have to point out their mistakes and help them correct them. 14. I will still spend some time giving you my word and in it I will continue to make revelations, I will continue to discover what I have in store for this time, I will continue to shed in my teaching the light necessary for humanity to be saved from the coming confusion. 15. I have announced to you that the time will come when you will see many spiritualists emerge and that you must be prepared to discover in whom there is truth and in whom imposture. 16. You will see false communications appear attributed to the Master. Rumors of divine envoys bringing messages to the world. Sex with the name of the seven seals and many confused and undefined doctrines. 17. All of this will be the product of the great spiritual confusion that humanity has been preparing. But do not fear, try to live watching and praying and you will not succumb to confusion, because my word, in the moments of greatest darkness, it will be a light that makes you contemplate my divine and perennial truth. 18. Understand that this time is for study, teaching and revelation. Do not be slow or negligent because later you will mourn the lost time. 19. Develop your intuition so that your spirit reveals the mission of which it is the bearer. Let him work in my work. Give him ease to fulfill the promise that it has made me and that it has written in the consciousness. If I, your master, promise to come at this time to illuminate with my word, your existence, why shouldn't the disciples keep their word to return to me? 20. I did not come to surprise you with my presence at this time, because my word was written and the world knew about my return. 
Let no one be surprised that by calling you to listen to my teaching is in order to ratify the gifts and missions that I deposited in his spirit by sending him to earth. 21. Fulfilling my promise, I have given you proof that my word is executed above all that is created, so that, when the time comes to make it stop among you, no one say that you did not know, no one say that you have been surprised, or say that you didn't have time to prepare. 22. Learn from now on to respect my will, obeying my orders and loving whatever I have. The one who loves and does my will is my son and is my disciple. He who does not respect my will and does his own will is my son, but not my disciple because he neither loves me nor imitates me. 23. In my doctrine I come to give you the norms so that you may succeed as disciples of this work, so that you do not stumble or make mistakes that later make you cry painfully. 24. I tell you from now on, that those who truly sow this seed with the grace with which I have entrusted it to you, they will walk in peace, the doors that had been deaf to their call will be open to them and even if they come to be fought, they will never be defeated in the fight, because their virtue will make them come out ahead in all the tests. 25. On the other hand, those who do not listen to the voice of their conscience, those who disobey my word and betray me, will be always at the mercy of their enemies, they will live uneasy and fear death. 26. Is it fair to ask my disciples that a perfect work such as the one that I have come to reveal to you, you expose it to humanity to be judged as false or to be considered as one more of the doctrines and theories emerged in these times, as fruits of the spiritual confusion that reigns? 27. Would it be good for you, whom I have loved so much and prepared with my word so that your testimony may be clean, you would have to fall into the hands of the justice of the earth, victims of your mistakes or you would be persecuted because you consider your fellow men harmful. Do you think that my doctrine, well practiced, could lead to these events? No, disciples. Let me speak to you like this because I know why I do it. Tomorrow when I stop talking to you in this way, you will know why I spoke to you like this, and you will say, the master knew well how many weaknesses we were going to suffer, nothing escapes his wisdom. 28. I want that when my communication has concluded you have a well-defined idea of what this doctrine is, so that you give it due fulfillment, because up to now true spiritualists have not emerged from the multitudes who have heard my word. Until now it has not been spiritualism that you have practiced, but a form that you have conceived of what my work is, but which is far from true spirituality. 29. You need to clothe yourself with strength to accept that you have been confused. You must stand up to amend your practices, seeking earnestly that the truth and purity of this doctrine shine forth among you. 30. Do not be afraid to change the exterior part of your practices and your worship, as long as you do not alter the essence of my teachings. 31. I will give you your reward, I will reward how much effort and how much sacrifice you make for the improvement of your works within the path that I have indicated to you. 32. Many of you scrutinize my manifestation to convince yourselves whether or not it is true. But many times, instead of scrutinizing her in its essence, you judge it on the outside and for that reason you become confused. 33. I have seen you observe my spokesmen even in their smallest movements. I have seen you surprise when you have seen them cry or be as human as you, and then your heart has exploded in blasphemies denying truth to my communication. I have heard when you have said, how can these be called pedestals or spokesmen for Christ, if I have seen them weak, small and human like any mortal, ah, uh, materialistic spirits who only seek the truth in what they can see or touch. Also at that time men judged me because I was born into poverty and they were scandalized when they saw that my body was bleeding on the cross and that my lips were complaining. Poor beings who could not understand the sense of each of my acts. 34. For those who feel my presence in their spirit, the essence of my word, the light of my teaching, the effluvium of my love, the consolation of my spiritual caress, those are the ones who close their eyes to everything outside to seek me with the spirit, those are the ones who always follow me. 35. In those who felt the presence of God in the word of Jesus, it was in those who remained the essence of the sacrifice of the master as the divine seal of love as in this time the essence of my word will remain in those who sought me in spirit. 36. 
Is it necessary that I repeat to you at every step that my kingdom is not of this world? 37. My word at this time comes to remind you of the past, to reveal to you the mysteries and to announce to you what is to come. She will straighten all that men have twisted and distorted, because I, jealous of the truth, come with the sword of my jealousy and my justice to overthrow everything false, to destroy hypocrisy and lies, to drive the merchants out of the temple of truth again. 38. Understand that you do not have to look for the truth in books, in advice or in the commandments of men, for your salvation. 39. All of you are to be saved. I cannot find one who is already on dry land. You are shipwrecked in the middle of a night of tempest, in which each one fights for himself without remembering his brother, because his life is in danger. 40. And truly I tell you, I am your only Savior, the one who comes once more in search of those who have been lost, because they moved away from the path that is the law. I come to illuminate your path so that you reach that land, that blessed land that you wait, because in its bosom it keeps infinite treasures for the Spirit. 41. Let my words sweeten your hearts, O people, so that tomorrow you will know how to love your brothers and sisters and be with them in their pain, as I have been with you in these hours of trials. 42. Help the branches of the tree that is this doctrine to grow and spread over the world, giving fruit and shade to so many hungry and tired pilgrims on earth. 43. I am the tree and you will be the fruits by which humanity will recognize me. Forty-four. If in your works there is sweetness and life, you will have given a faithful testimony of who has taught you and has given you the sap of love and truth. 45. The lesson that in this third era I have come to give you is a new testament that will remain united to that of the times past, because the three form a single revelation. 46. My light will illuminate the understanding of men destined to unite my teachings in a single book. 47. My spiritual servants will guide the hand of my chosen ones so that there is no stain in that book. 48. The differences that have existed between this people, their discussions and their disunity, will disappear when you deepen in this book and you come to understand the truth of my work. 49. Today you do not realize the consequences that your disunity is going to cause you, but in truth I tell you that tomorrow you're going to cry because of it. How many times have I asked you for the unification of thoughts, practices, spirits? How many times have you also ignored my divine advice? 50. I have inspired you to form a people, giving you the name, the new Israel. I have given you various missions and positions so that in your journey and in your struggles you have all the necessary elements, as happened with Israel in the first era, when he crossed through the desert in pursuit of the promised land. But you have not tried to understand until now my mandates, nor have you wanted to observe the example of union that that people left written, an indelible example because it was their harmony and their union that made him overcome the vicissitudes that he encountered on his way. 51. A new land of promise awaits you, but you are still distant from her. You go across the vast desert, you left behind the slavery of Pharaoh and you have already received the law, however, you have not completely abandoned the idolatry and without realizing it you sometimes worship the golden calf. 52. Trials, obstacles and persecutions will have to come to you in order for you to wake up from your sleep. Then you will be ready to fulfill my mandates and zealous to watch over the work that I have revealed to you. Like at that time the Israelites built the tabernacle and the ark to keep the law, because the trials had awakened to the light. 53. Your tabernacle will now be your spirit and your ark, the consciousness. My law will be there, illuminating the path of my people. 54. There has not arisen in this time a man who, imitating Moses, walked before this people, encouraging with wonders through his faith. But with a little preparation you could feel the spiritual presence of Elijah, who is the one who guides you, encourage and inspires on this journey. 55. The crowds listening to me are crying. Only I know the reason for your complaints. Only I know all obstacles and difficulties that they have encountered in their path and what is holding them back. 
56. Persevere, multitudes, be faithful and you will see obstacles abetted. Pray and work, each time with greater truth, purity and perfection, so that in your mission you may find the consolation and strength necessary to cope with the vicissitudes of life. If you walk like this, when you least think you will see the path cleared and the stumbling blocks gone. 57. You are my fields, where for now wheat and tares grow together. It is not yet time to reap, but when she arrives, the works of each one of you will be judged. Then I will leave the good disciples on earth and I will raise up from this world those who have not borne fruits of unification and spirituality. 58. Watch and keep my word. Not because you have received from me very great positions and missions, do you trust yourselves, believing that my justice can never reach you. Remember David and Solomon, who having been great before his people fell asleep in his greatness, they broke the law and saw my divine justice arrive upon them, inexorable and wise, when they believed that because they were so loved by the Father they would never be touched by him. 59. Think, O people, in the new generations. Think of your children as did the patriarchs who they prepared their peoples so that they knew how to receive the arrival of the Messiah. 60. Pray for those who come, prepare the way for them with charity and love. Understand that they will have even more missions higher than yours and that it will be good that they find a trace of spirituality to walk. What is that paw print? That of your life, that of your works. 61. Why do you have to always make me come with complaints? I come to you for love, because I see that you carry pain in your heart and I want to console you, because I want you to carry my peace in your spirit. 62. Sometimes I appear before you as judge, sometimes you have me as father, and I always present myself as teacher. Under these three phases you have the divine essence that is one, law, love, wisdom, I have there the trinity that exists in my spirit. 63. Close your eyes and set your spirit free, so that he may live intensely these moments of communion with his teacher. Let him sit near me like those who in the second era followed the master along roads, valleys, villages, banks, and deserts so as not to lose a single one of my teachings. Then you can understand the meaning figuratively speaking with which I sometimes speak when I take from the material of the earth to represent to you the spiritual and put it in your scope. You will see how my word brings the kingdom of heaven closer to your spirit. 64. Come, humanity, let me teach you, or do you want pain to continue teaching you throughout your life? 65. Come to my countryside to sow the lands with brotherhood. I assure you that my countryside will not disappoint you like the world. 66. Here is the path in front of your spirit, inviting you to take it and never stop, because each step that you take, will be a step that brings your spirit closer to the perfect abode that awaits it. 67. The time that I will still be among you speaking in this way is very brief and I want you to learn to do merits, so that in recent years my word overflows through these spokesmen. 68. How are divine inspirations like a reward for your merits? With your faith, your zeal, and your spirituality. May love exist within the people, may charity be practiced, may the truth be loved. 69. Truly I tell you, if you do not unify as is my will, humanity will scatter you, and will cast you from its bosom if it be seen that your life departs from what you preach. 70. What will happen if men discover that in each room there is a different worship and a different way of practicing my doctrine? You cannot conceive that I was the one who taught you. 71. I entrust you the last three years of my communication so that you work for the union of this people, a unification that will embrace what is spiritual as well as what is external, so that your work, full of harmony and equality, is the proof greater that all of you in different places and in different regions were taught by a single master, God. My peace be with you.